For our next question, we're given the function y equals negative 2 over 3 quantity x minus 4, and then that quantity plus 1. And we're asked to graph that, but to follow certain procedures first, we're going to determine the parent function, state the argument, rearrange the argument if necessary to determine the values of k and d. The, uh, those are the variables that affect horizontal transformations. Then we're going to uh, rearrange the function equation if necessary to determine values of a and c. Those are the variables that uh, indicate uh, vertical transformations. And then we're going to state the transformations in an appropriate order. Finally, uh, we're going to graph the curve using three different methods. We're going to graph each one in the appropriate order, showing each um, different transformation visually. Uh, second, we're going to use a table method that jumps straight to the coordinates of the image curve. And last but not least, we're going to use the transformation formula, which is um, you know, maybe even a little quicker than the table, at jumping straight to the coordinates. So we start with uh, the curve itself, and we want to know the parent function. In this case, the parent function is the function y equals 1 over x. We have x in the denominator. We're then going to state the argument. Well, the denominator in this case is the argument, so it is 3 bracket x minus 4. Rearrange the argument if necessary. In this case, it's actually not necessary. It was already factored for us, so k is 3 and d is 4. We're then going to rearrange the function uh, if necessary. We see here that a is going to equal negative 2, and that's because when we have a numerator of negative 2, it's as though we had a numerator of 1 and multiplied the entire uh, function by negative 2. And last, we have a c value of 1 because that's the quantity being added on the end. We'd like to state the transformations verbally. Well, k equaling 3 means we have a horizontal compression of 1 third. d equaling 4 means we translate to the right 4 units. Our vertical transformations, uh, we have three of them. a value of negative 2 means a reflection in the x-axis followed by a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And a c value of 1 means we translate up 1 unit. So let's try graphing. Well, the first method we can use is to show each transformation individually. We'll begin by starting with our parent curve, y equals 1 over x. And um, we see what it looks like. We get a basic idea of what our curve should look like, in a sense. And then what we do next is we show what happens with a horizontal compression by a factor of one-third. Now this is difficult to see perhaps, but what we did here is we multiplied each x-coordinate by one-third. So one-half comma two became one-sixth comma two. Very difficult to read. One-one became one-third one. Two comma one-half became two-thirds comma one-half. And so what we have are three new points here. Similarly, we have three new points over here. Negative 2 comma negative 1 half became negative 2 thirds comma negative 1 half. Very difficult to read. Negative 1, negative 1 became negative 1 third, negative 1. And negative 1 half, negative 2 became negative 1 sixth, negative 2. Again, all we did there is we multiplied every x coordinate by 1 third. Well, what we can then do is ignore the black curve and simply show the red. And we have y equals 1 over 3x. Well, the next transformation is to translate everything over 4 units. Well, that includes the asymptote. The asymptote, vertical asymptote, starts at x equals 0. When we translate it over 4 units, it becomes this new yellow line of x equals 4. And all we did with the rest of the points is simply translate them over 4 units. So the red curve is now transformed over to this blue curve, and we're now two transformations into our five transformation process. Well, we're next going to consider the effect of a negative 1, which is a reflection in the x-axis. So this blue curve gets, trans, uh, gets reflected up to be this uh, green curve, and this blue portion of the curve gets translated down to be this green portion of the curve here. 
So at this point we can ignore the blue and we're talking about the green. And we're now three transformations in to a five transformation process. We are then going to consider what happens with a vertical stretch by a factor of two. Well what happens is every y coordinate gets multiplied by two. So if you look really closely you can see how um, what we tried to do here was indicate double the, double the distance up from the x-axis. So this looks like about one-third and this looks like about two-thirds. This looks like about one and this looks like about two. We did the best we could to uh, basically double the distance of every point from the x-axis whether it be above or below. And that's what a vertical stretch by a factor of two is. We can now ignore that uh, green curve and focus on the blue. Our last one is to translate up by one unit. This is the fifth of five transformations. Well we had the blue curve a moment ago and what we now do is raise our horizontal asymptote up from the x-axis which is y equals zero to the line y equals one and um, we raise every point on this uh, portion of the blue curve up one unit. We get this red curve and on this portion of the blue curve we uh, move every point up one unit and we get this portion of the red curve. And so that's what the final curve looks like. If we were to look at them all on one, that would uh, be quite painful if we focused on it for too long. So we will skip it and move on to the chart method. The chart method is uh, rather interesting in this case. We have six different points on the parent function and when we divide each um, each x coordinate by three and then add four to each x coordinate and then we um, multiply each y coordinate by negative two and then add one to each y coordinate what we end up with are these coordinates here and the coordinates in this case aren't quite enough to give us a great graph because we have to talk about asymptotes. With asymptotes, our asymptotes are lines and as such they have infinite length and are infinitely narrow. Therefore they can neither be stretched nor compressed either vertically or horizontally. Therefore the values of K and A have no impact on our asymptotes. With respect to horizontal asymptotes, they cannot be horizontally translated either left or right because they're infinitely long in both directions, the horizontal asymptote that is. Therefore the value of D doesn't impact the horizontal asymptote, but the horizontal asymptote can be translated up or down. Since we start with a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero on the parent function, in this uh, function the horizontal asymptote will always be y equals c, so in this case it's y equals one. Similar discussion of vertical asymptotes means that they cannot be they cannot be vertically translated up or down because they're infinitely long in both of those directions. The value of c doesn't Im impact the vertical asymptote, but it can be translated left or right. And since we start with a vertical asymptote of x equals zero, the vertical asymptote will always be x equals d for this type of function. And in this question, the vertical asymptote will be x equals four. We can then graph the parent function as well as our new asymptotes as well as the six points we got from our chart method and then we do our best to maintain the integrity of that curve and we get something that looks like that. We can also do method three which is the transformation formula, in other words the machine. We know our AKD and C values and we know the points on our original function and we get the same image points we had a moment ago. We have the same discussion of asymptotes. The values of K and A have no impact on our asymptotes because they can't be stretched or compressed. The value of D doesn't impact the horizontal asymptote, but it, rather it will always be Y equals C, or in this case, Y equals one. The vertical asymptotes cannot be um, uh, stretched or compressed horizontally. So the only impact on it is the d value. The vertical asymptote will always be x equals d in this type of a, an equation. And taking all of the information that we had a moment ago and combining it into one graph, we get the graph that we just had a short time ago that I'm looking for right here. And that is the final curve 
in this situation, the blue one. The black is the parent and the blue is the function we were asked to graph.